Do you ever get the feeling that type one diabetes kind of feels like a mouse trap sometimes? Like you're just going through your life, everything's fine and normal, and then you get stuck and your situation entirely changes. Uh, for me, that's what happened. That's how I felt when I was diagnosed at age 19. My entire life got flipped, turned upside down. But today I'm going to talk to you about how, yes, it can feel like type 1 diabetes. It's like getting caught in a mousetrap. But more importantly, I'm going to teach you guys how to get out of that trap before it's too late. All right, but before we do, we're going to hop into our theme song. If you have not seen me before, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I'm a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist and someone living with type 1 diabetes. We get into our theme song and I got a special story for you. So let's jump into it. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. So if you've been following along, we did have a fun vacation recently, went up to Big Bear, California, got some mountain biking in with my dad, some quality time with my family, uh, lots of pickleball and hiking and just really a great time out in nature, kind of getting away from it all for a couple of days. Uh, but before we took off for that trip, we were packing things up, doing laundry, kind of getting the house ready as we're you know getting ready to take off. And uh, as I'm heading out into the garage, <laughs> I saw a mouse run across the, uh, the, the border of the garage. And this is the first time I've seen that because we moved into this house like a couple months ago. I was like, oh no, we've got a mouse in the house, <laughs> which is uh, actually oddly ironic because I just read that book to my 10 month old daughter like a week before. So we got a mouse in the house. Uh, I'm sorry, the book is called What Happens If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, right? He's gonna ask for a glass of water and so forth. Uh, but so, you know, finally found a mouse actually in our house and I was like, oh crap. So I uh, did not catch it. it hid in the garage you know we're still unpacking crazy enough uh but within that i had to decide you know what am i going to do about this and i uh, ended up having some glue or sticky traps that were still left over from our move previously and i was like you know what we'll just lay out some sticky traps and uh maybe it catches it maybe not but that's all i can do right now because we got to focus on packing right uh a couple hours later head back out change out the laundry in the garage and wouldn't you know it there's a mouse in the trap and it's just staring at me like who are you? And I'm like, oh no, like yay that I caught it, but uh, now I got to do something about it, right? And I'm an animal lover at heart. Growing up, I wanted to be a veterinarian. I, those of you, probably no one actually knew that. So uh, I wanted to be a veterinarian until my dad filled me in growing up. And he was like, you know that vets actually have to put animals down, right? Like euthanasia. And I was like, what? No. <laughs> I can't do that. I could never harm an animal. Uh, and that completely changed my trajectory of life. But uh, I'm looking at this mouse and I'm like, crap, this is the downside of sticky traps that that mouse is now stuck to the pad because they're really sticky. Uh, but I have to kill it now. You, know, you can't just like let it starve. That's inhumane. So now I'm like, this, this sick stomach or feeling is kind of coming up. And I'm like, I really don't want to do this. But if I want to do what's best for that mouse, I, I have to kill it. And I'm trying to figure out how to do so in a humane way where it's not going to suffer. Right. So I'm looking around for like, I don't even know, some kind of a weapon or something. And I looking through the garage. I'm like, what can I use that's going to hurt this thing the least so that it can just be out of its misery and then I can you know, dispose of it. Uh, and as I'm looking around, kind of clanking around, making some noise, the mouse starts freaking out, right? Obviously, there's a giant creature that probably has some bad intentions. <laughs> it's just circling this thing. And it's like, oh, my gosh, it's, it's like trying to get out of the glue trap, right? And I'm, I'm feeling sick to my stomach, just like, I hate this. I'm so sorry, but like, this has to be done. We're taking off on vacation soon. And uh, I turn my back and go to find some tools to see what options I have, you know, and I'm not going to go into detail of like what my thoughts were, but I'm like, what are the options right uh and I, I hear the sound stop and i'm like huh did i have like a heart attack i look back it's gone and i'm like oh wait i'm like happy but not like i'm happy i don't have to kill it right now but also very frustrated because now once again there is a mouse loose in the garage so i'm like ah oh, gosh dang it you know i i, I missed my opportunity we're heading off on vacation now like what am i gonna do it's probably gonna go through and like eat food or something uh, so long story short, I go back inside, tell my wife, cause she knew I was like 
heavy hearted thinking about like, I don't want to kill it. Uh, and long story short, I was like, I just got to put some more glue traps out, you know, maybe it'll get trapped again while we're at Big Bear and I'll take care of it then. But right now back to packing because we were we kind of waiting until the last minute, right? Uh, so do our thing. We go off to Big Bear, have an absolute blast. It was incredible. Blood sugars were mostly stable. Uh, had some amazing mountain biking. If you missed that video, it's over on Instagram at FTF Warrior or TikTok. I actually posted the whole thing there. Uh, one of my favorite runs. Uh, but we come back from our trip, just rested, rejuvenated, forgot all about our, our mouse problems. And I opened the garage door. And uh, as soon as I opened the door, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a mouse somewhere in here. I should probably keep the door closed, right? And I look over in the corner. And there's the mouse dead and i was like oh 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 <laughs> like this wild fluctuation of emotions is like oh, it, oh it's a dead rat or mouse uh oh but wait now i don't have to kill it oh but that means it suffered <laughs> and like this this back and forth this dichotomy of thoughts right uh but ultimately got to a place where i was like okay good like this is this is for the best i don't have to deal with it unfortunately it suffered but it is what it is you know like it's just time to deal with it but what I realized in that moment was that this mousetrap really ties into our relationship with diabetes and how, you know, when we're first diagnosed, it feels like you get stuck, right? This, this mouse is just walking along and then pff, its foot was just stuck in glue. It, it's, it's very trapped. And I felt that when I was first diagnosed that there was this uh, wave of emotions initially was confusion. Like, why me? What did I do to deserve this? Right. And then it led into more of a panic where I'm like, shoot, what can I do? What can I eat? Uh, can I live a full life? Uh, and, you know, can I be healthy? Can I still have kids? Can I still date people? Like, I did not know what it looked like. And similarly, with this mouse, it's probably the first emotion that it felt the first time it got caught was like walking along, glue trap. Oh, shoot. What? What? Why, why is my foot stuck to the ground? Right? Into, of course, panic when I came out and I'm looking around the garage for something to, to unalive it with, right? Uh, and in that panic, the mouse had actually worked its way free. You know, there was this level of urgency, of tenacity that the mouse was like, it's do or die, literally. Like, there's some giant creature that's in here to kill me. I need to get out. And in that urgency, the mouse was determined enough to make its way out of that trap, which I don't know how that was possible. It is ridiculously sticky. So good for that mouse, you know, the, the drive that it had. But I've noticed this dichotomy between those who are determined to figure out their diabetes and those who are complacent, right? And, you know, in the medical world, they call it um, compliant, I think, and non-compliant diabetic. It's like the worst that you can possibly say, oh, you're my non-compliant patient. Like, stop saying that. There's got to be a better term for that. But there is some truth behind it, right? So you have those who are determined to figure it out, those who are a bit more complacent with their diabetes and maybe just haven't gotten that kick in the pants yet. And it, for me, it took a while. I did not take care of my diabetes initially, uh, but getting to a place finally where I was like, there's a certain level of urgency. I have to take care of my own health. Now, when that urgency is present within diabetes, it, it opens up this whole new world of research, of actually talking to our doctors, provided that you've got a good one, right? That's, that's kind of hit or miss. <laughs> but uh, actually starting to make an effort, looking at blood sugars, looking for trends, trying to figure out how much insulin should I be taking for the carbs that I'm eating? You know, uh, how can I lower my A1C? How can I improve my time and range? What is time and range? Do I want to wear a CGM or an insulin pump? And all these new questions come up when there is a sense of urgency to take care of ourselves. And oftentimes that sense of urgency allows us to make breakthroughs in our diabetes, just as it did with that mouse. That mouse was like, shoot, do or die. I need to get out of this trap. Urgent, urgent, urgent. And it got out. It broke free. Now with diabetes, that breakthrough moment is going to look different for all of us, right? Some people, it's going to be the A1C. Others, it's going to be time and range. Others, it's going to be quality of life. You know, maybe your numbers already look decent, but you're recognizing that you're living a life of restriction, right? Now, the other side of that equation, though, is that in the absence of urgency, in the absence of someone lighting a fire under your butt, giving you a kick in the pants, sometimes we can fall back to complacency. So whether you start in complacency, complacency in the first place, or maybe you had the control, but you're starting to coast, right? Starting to fall back away from counting your carbs, away from dosing the proper amount of insulin, away from maintaining that tight control, because maybe you're exhausted, right? Maybe you're burnt out. And that's a real thing, something to be aware of. But whatever the case may be, if you're noticing this level of complacency, it's time to switch gears because complacency, quite literally, as we've seen in this example, kills. 
Now with diabetes, the killing is slower, right? But to that mouse, however many days it took, it was still a, a, a rough and unfortunate process. I don't know how it died. I'm assuming it just kind of starved or something. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that mouse in the absence of urgency chose not to break free. And maybe it's because it thought that over time it would fix the situation or maybe whatever it's thinking. I don't know. But the point is, if it had a sense of urgency, had I come home, you know, two days earlier and scared it again, it probably would have freaked out, ah, urgency, survive, do or die. And it would have broken free again and gotten away and probably survived. Right. But without that level of urgency, it sat there, it waited until it was too late. Now, with your diabetes, level of complacency can differ, and the, uh, the answer to your complacency can differ as well. But what I want you to start taking into account is this idea that complacency can come across at any time, different levels to any person. Nobody is immune to complacency, so you got to watch out for it. And it has many different symptoms, many different signs, same as burnout, depression, anxiety, frustration. But if you've noticed any level of complacency, which... I actually recognized in my own life not too long ago, you got to nip it in the bud. Like you got to take care of that before it gets to a place where it is too late to turn around and fix it. Now, I want to give you an example of what urgency versus complacency can look like. There's just one example, right? But within the level of uh, diabetes management that you're putting in the effort for right now, there are certain aspects that are going to feel more urgent and uh, it, it's more natural for the urgency to come up. We talk about low blood sugars as a primary example. If I have an urgent low blood sugar, the chances of me just sitting back and going, huh, this will work itself out are very low, right? Like internally, my body is freaking out. I can feel it. I'm shaky. I'm sweaty. My heart is racing. I get nervous and I am not going to let that slide. So that is an, a level of urgency that will not pass. Just like that mouse broke free, I'm going to deal with the low blood sugar. I'm going to take care of it. But on the opposite side of that, and this is going to vary person to person, the numbers are going to change at, at what point you determine this is the threshold at which I take action. But with the higher blood sugars, a lot of times we are more complacent, right? And I, I'm guilty of this as well. I've certainly sat at higher blood sugar numbers and I'm like, ah, I'll take care of that in an hour, right? I'm going to get this done at work or finish this conversation or whatever it is, finish the movie, but uh, or bedtime, right? Oh, I'm going to sleep for another hour and then I'll take care of the high blood sugar. Certainly been guilty of that. But that complacency over a long enough time horizon can also kill, right? It's a slower killer. You know, the low blood sugar poses an immediate threat, which is why that level of urgency is so present. It's a survival mechanism. But with the higher blood sugars, it's like, yeah, I feel kind of sick, but is it really that bad? The answer is yes, of course, you know, if we let ourselves fall into a habit of complacency surrounding higher blood sugars or letting blood sugars go out of range and not worrying about it too much, that complacency compounds over time and it can cause irreversible damage. We want to be very cautious about that, right? So getting an eye for other parts of your diabetes, like where is the urgency? Where is the complacency? How do I assign more urgency or inject urgency uh, and manufacture that, right? in my own life, because I hold the choices to my actions. So if I choose to make something urgent, it becomes urgent. I have to believe that though, in my heart, I can't just say, I believe that my time and range needs to be a priority. <laughs> like you have to actually feel that within you, it's got to be a burning fire, if you expect it to be urgent. But sometimes it's hard to have that level of urgency without uh, either guidance or accountability or a support group, Like you have to have people around you that support you in that journey as well. Now, here's the thing, that mouse, going back to the mouse story, right? It got stuck in the glue trap the second time. And ultimately, whether it was laziness or complacency or who knows what else, it died, right? And part of the reason that I believe that happened is that getting stuck in a glue trap, it slows you down, but it's an incredible amount of effort to remove yourself from that glue trap. I'll tell you, it got stuck um, when I was pulling them out to put them out in the first place. One of them got stuck on my hand and I was like pulling hard and it was difficult for me, a giant human, right? <laughs> Let alone a mouse to get out of that. So the level of effort required to remove the mouse from that situation was far greater than the perceived value of removing themselves from that mess, right? Sometimes with diabetes, we can feel hopeless and it's like, why do I even try? But the issue is that uh, not that we don't know how to get out of that mess, but rather that we don't prioritize it or value the end result of that enough to go through the pain and the uncomfortableness of growing, 
right? Of learning about diabetes or going through the trial and error. Uh, maybe it's hiring someone that you want to help you, but you don't want to put up the money to get there because it's like, ah, diabetes isn't that important to me, right? And you have to start breaking through those false beliefs, through those barriers, if you ever expect to break through the complacency. See, it's this, this level of step by step. You have to start breaking down the reasons why you're complacent before you stop being complacent in the first place and then set yourself up for success. Now, I talked about earlier how the low blood sugar kind of mimics that urgency that the mouse first went through, how it got out of the trap, right? But with the longer term issues with diabetes, you know, this level of complacency that we can develop where, you know, a day of high blood sugars turns into a week of high blood sugars, turns into a year of high blood sugars. And before you know it, you've got this compounding effect where you're potentially dealing with complications or early death or maybe a heart attack or just, you know, slower healing, all these different things that are going to impact your quality of life as well, which then in turn does what? Makes you more frustrated, more depressed or sad about the situation, which can lead into further complacency, which just drags you down and down and down and down until it feels like you're at the bottom of a pit that you cannot get out of. You have to catch it early before you get to the bottom of the pit. Call out for help, whether it's to yourself, to another, to a family member, to a coach, to somebody else who has type one, call out for help. Let people know you need assistance with this thing and create an action plan before it gets to a place where you feel like you can't get out. You can't escape because ultimately that is what will tear you down. That is what will be your end. Now, we talked about quality of life for a second there. I want to touch on that as well. Complacency doesn't just have to deal with diabetes management and blood sugar control. It can also manifest itself in, in your lifestyle as well and the choices, the habits that you make, right? And you talk about uh, going out to eat dinner and maybe you're like, ah, it's too difficult to count carbs and I, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to order a, a side salad. You know, maybe I'll order some grilled chicken on the side without any fun sauces. Uh, I'll just, I'll go back to my normal routine tomorrow. And then, you know, before you know, it, it's been days, weeks, months, years of choosing these foods that you don't really enjoy. You've been pulling back and restricting yourself and putting yourself in this little box to make sure that you don't piss off diabetes, right? And before you know it, you've become complacent in your lifestyle, not just diabetes management. That looks good, right? But maybe your lifestyle, is where you've shown this complacency where it's like, ooh, as long as I stay in this little corner over here, don't go on hikes, don't go on adventures, don't go to family dinners, I'll be safe and my diabetes won't get angry at me, right? But that also counts as a level of complacency. You have to snap out of that and realize that life is meant to be so much more than holding yourself to this small restrictive space. You're allowed to eat good food. You're allowed to go on hikes, travel, mountain bike for three hours in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> You're allowed to do these things, but you do have to put the work in first, which sometimes requires urgency. And that urgency sometimes has to be manufactured by you which means you have to take the first step. You have to acknowledge the danger that you're putting yourself in by being complacent, whether directly to your health because your blood, your blood sugars are not where they should be or to your quality of life, which not only impacts you, but potentially others as well because they're not getting the best version of you. Does that make sense so far? See, and that's the slow killer, right? The pulling back, the restriction of foods. Oh, I can't eat that or, oh, I shouldn't eat that. Maybe you think you can have carbs, but you just continually choose not to and your actions don't match up with your beliefs, right? But whatever the case may be, that's the slow killer of your quality of life and or of your actual life is complacency. You cannot let that take root in your life because once it does, it will drag you down until it's too late. So if you expect to get out of this trap that we're all going to fall into, right? Diabetes, it feels like a mouse trap, right? It's there, you have it. It's there for life. <laughs> you don't get a choice. But if you can inject that urgency, even if it's you injecting it yourself, manufacturing that, oh, I got to go kind of moment, right? That's going to help you build momentum to get out of that trap. But then, of course, to avoid traps in the future, that's where you have to build the knowledge. That's the gap that so many people are missing that I talk to, right? So if you understand what the knowledge looks like, you can start to build the awareness of those traps to stick away from them. Uh, but to get out of the trap in the first place, to remove yourself from either restrictive lifestyle or to start building better foundations for blood sugar management, you do have to inject that urgency. Now, what does that look like tactically? Right now, you're probably thinking, hmm, yeah, he's right. That's a good idea right? But do not let it end there. That is complacency. 
going, hmm, yeah, it's a good idea. Cool episode. That was fun. Okay. So I need to go back to my, my normal life that I was already doing beforehand and not make any changes because that's uncomfortable. Right? That's the complacency we're talking about here. That is sitting in the glue trap. That is refusing to get uncomfortable, which is what growth is. Growth is uncomfortable. It's going to require that you step up into a better version of yourself if you expect to reap those rewards. So instead of saying, oh, that was a cool episode, and I'm going to go back to my life now. Today, I am going to require of you that you take uncomfortable growth steps. You got to move forward in one area of your life. Now, this could be your motivation. It could be your blood sugar management. It could be your lifestyle. Maybe you haven't gone out for a, a run in forever because you've been afraid. I'm not telling you to go run a marathon. I'm not telling you to be reckless, but take one step in the right direction. And for me, at one point in my life, that was actually taking one step. See, I had let diabetes push me back into a box so deep, so far backwards that I was nervous to step outside and go for longer walks. I was like, oh, but what happens if I get too far away from home and I can't get back to sugar? Oh, I'll bring sugar. Yeah, but what if I don't bring enough? Like, I, I'm just not going to go for a walk. I'll stay at home where it's safe and comfortable and complacent. That was my mindset. And I know so many of you are in the same boat or are in a similar boat with your lifestyle and you cannot let that continue. Take this from my experience. The longer you let complacency set in, the more permanent it becomes. Today is your day. I'm gonna say something super cheesy you've heard before. This is your sign, right? Do not let another day go by. Do not let another minute pass by where you remain complacent, giving up the quality of life that you deserve. This is your life and you have to take responsibility for it. That's a lesson that took me far too many years to learn. Those are years that I cannot get back. I will never get back. And I don't want that for you. So take this moment, look at your life, look for those signs of complacency. Where am I not taking action? Where do I need to inject, potentially manufacture this urgency and say, you know what, enough's enough. I need to take this next step. Whatever that looks like for you, do it today, do it now. Do not miss this opportunity. You're building momentum internally. I can feel it. I know that you are. Do not miss this. Or you're going to look back, another year has gone by, and you're going to wish you had taken action, but now complacency has taken root. I don't want that for you. So look at your life. Where can you manufacture this urgency? Where do you notice yourself with one foot in the glue trap where you can still get out? But if you do nothing, you will remain until you die. Do not let your motivation die. It is so much more difficult to start if you let it die. All right. So find that spot. Start taking action today on one piece. It doesn't have to be fixing everything, but do one good thing for yourself to make forward momentum happen. And if it's within diabetes management that you're having a difficult time, whether it's you don't know what to do, that's a pretty common one. Sometimes you know what to do, but you just rather do it faster. Learn about the shortcuts, right? Or maybe you just want to follow a proven system. Someone who's got the answer, someone who's done it themselves, maybe, and actually gone through type one as well. If you feel like any of those are describing you with your diabetes and you're looking for better control, so you don't have to remain complacent, right? And you want to inject and manufacture that urgency to get you to a place where it's more controlled, more stable, and allows for more freedom and flexibility with your lifestyle. I invite you to go to diabetesinaction.com. Now, here's what's going to happen. When you go to diabetesinaction.com, you're going to see a registration for a training that I did. That training alone has helped thousands of people turn their lives around with diabetes. All right. Now, what it's going to be, it's about a 30 minute video explaining a new process that I use and that I teach my clients on how to stabilize your blood sugars and also predict your blood sugars better than the algorithms that you're hearing about these days. Now, the only place you're going to learn about that is on that website, diabetesinaction.com. At the end of that training, you can either take your notes and go implement. If you're somebody who's like, all I needed was the framework. I know what to do now. I'm good. Fantastic. You've taken forward steps. I'm proud of you. If at the end of that video, however, you're looking for assistance or even just to have a phone call to see 
like how you can start making steps forward. There's not, you know, some kind of sales pitch. There's not us going to force you into something. We literally just look into what you're going through, craft a plan with you. And if it makes sense to work together, we might invite you. But I'll tell you this, we don't invite everybody. Oftentimes, we just set up a plan and say, does this look good? Can you do this on your own? Awesome. There you go. My goal is to help you. And that's the best way we can do it. So go watch that free training, diabetesinaction.com. Watch the full thing. Jump on a call with myself or one of my team members. We'll craft a custom plan for you based on that conversation. It's not just some you know, template that we copy across the world. Everybody's diabetes is a little bit different. We got to figure out where those complacency signs are, how we can inject the urgency, and then which pieces you want to use that for, they're going to have the best results for your blood sugars. All right. So do not let this moment pass you by. Go to diabetesinaction.com, watch that training, sign up for the call, and we're going to chat with you and help you create a custom plan. All right. I'm proud of you for watching this far. Things got a little bit heated in this one, but I want you to understand complacency literally kills when it comes to diabetes. It either kills us or it kills our dreams. And I don't want you to waste time like I did. All right. So get over there. Diabetesinaction.com. It was made specifically for you to make forward progress today. All right. Hope you enjoyed this one. Catch you next week and have an amazing rest of your day. Keep up the fight.